Hello. In this video, we are going to learn about lock and reentrant locks in Java multithreading. So here I have two classes. One is main application, and another one is a running app class. So in the main application, I have a main method, and I have creating an instance of the running app, and I have two different uh, threads, two threads T1 and T2. and in both t1 and t2 i am calling the methods increment by first thread and increment by second thread on the running app class and then i am starting the two threads and i am joining with the main main thread at the end i am printing the count so if we go into this running app class i have a count initiated to 0 and then i have an incremental method so in this increment method i have a for loop uh, which will iterate for 10000 time and uh, it will increment the count by 1 in each iteration i have two different methods increment by first thread increment by second thread and both will call the increment so what we wanted to achieve here is from the thread t1 we are calling the increment by first thread which will increment the count by 10000 times and then in thread 2 we are calling increment by thread second thread which will also increment the count by 10000 so the at the end we want the thread count total count value to be 20000 so let's run this program and see what it prints Okay, it is printing only ten thousand. It's printing fourteen thousand, thirteen thousand. Okay, so it is not printing the expected value. It happens because of the synchronization issues. So what we do now is let's try to use the lock class. Lock, lock. so here lock is an interface so reentrant lock is one of the implementations of the lock so how we are going to use this lock method is we'll use lock dot lock and then lock dot unlock before increment method we will use this lock and after increment method we will use this unlock method so that another thread will not be able to enter into the increment method now let's run this program and see what kind of output we are going to get okay we are getting 20000 let's run it again 20000 20000 okay so now the program works fine uh, but we have an issue here what happens if there is an exception thrown from the increment method so for example if first thread is running and if exception is thrown in this case we will not be able to call the unlock method so and then our se second thread will not be able to acquire the lock that is why we always need to run the increment method in the try block and the unlock in the finally Use the same logic here too for thread two. Okay, so this is how we should use it. Now let's see uh, what are the different uh, uses of reentrant lock. So the lock has a something called as a condition class. so which specifies when to await and when to signal 
so await means that it will release the lock and it will wait for the signal so let's see how this works so I will see the condition and the condition so lock dot new condition let's import this now uh, let's call await method here so when we call await method what happens is it will release the lock and it will wait for the signal so in the line number 20 our first thread has acquired the lock but in line number 22 it will release and it will wait for the signal so what we do here is let's signal so what we're doing here is uh, we're also sleeping our thread for two seconds for example like thread dot sleep for 2000 milliseconds so this way we are ensuring that the first thread is always executing first so in the first thread is acquired in the lock and it will wait until it receives the signal so we will write some sys out here like system out uh, such as I'm going to wait and then here I'm just awake and before condition uh, let's say okay so here once we lock what we do here is we will wait for user return key using scanner class like new scanner of system dot i stream and then next line so when user hits a next line it waits to the it goes to the next line until until then it waits on this line so let's see um return key so once the once you hit the return key then okay so now see how this works I'm going to wait and I'm waiting for return key now let's enter a return key so when you hit the return key return is passed and then we our we are providing a signal through the condition and once it is once it is signaled then this loop will execute you know because if you are look at the code how it how the sysouts are printed so it is printing return is pressed and after that it is printing I am just awake here and then the count reached 20,000 so if you look at this method when you say that condition dot signal it means that the first thread will be able first thread will be able to acquire the lock but it doesn't guarantee that it is definitely going to acquire it so it will wait until the lock is available so in our second thread we are providing an unlock but if you do not do this unlock what happens is it is still going to wait 
see I'm going to wait and we are waiting for return key I hit it now it says return is pressed now it should print the I am just awake line here but it didn't because it is waiting to acquire the lock and we haven't unlocked it so even when we use this condition dot signal and await we must always use the lock and lock dot lock dot lock methods and lock dot unlock methods thank you thank you for watching the video please subscribe and share for more videos thank you